and I, let's get some questions because I mean, how the thing that's hard about a Q and A for a movie like this is you've answered all the questions. That any question you might have has been answered by this film. But the question I do have is, how did this begin? I know that there, uh, you know, ten years ago you made the sh the the, the trip for Funny or Die. When did that become a conversation of we got to go beyond the trailer? Well, it, it was actually just an email I got out of the blue from Al in February of 2019, um, where he said that you know he'd been playing the trailer uh, at his concerts for about a decade, and after after every show, uh, you know, people would come up and ask him, "When can I see this movie?" As, as if that one was real. <laughs> so and then, uh, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody had come out, and Rocket Man was about to come out, so you know, Al thought it was the right time. And, <laughs> I feel like before I even got to the end of it, I was already responding like, yes, let's start writing this today. <laughs> and so, you know, you mentioned those two, two biopics, but what was the process like in writing this movie? It's like almost a taxonomy of every music biopic ever made. Did you need to do the research? Are you already familiar with the, uh, with the films? Al? I mean, we kind of uh, like watched a lot of those biopics. We made notes and we wrote, wrote down all the tropes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, but it, I mean, it's 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 everything. It's even you know, it, it's it's Forrest Gump, it's Boogie Nights. It's so it's not, you know, it's not even just uh, limited to musical biopics. We're trying to tell just the most epic biopic story <laughs> of all time. You know? Now, now about casting too, because I mean, you had a cast for the for the trailer. How did you land Evan and Daniel? And also to Evan and Daniel, what sort of brought you to the, the project? Well, I, I mean, it was a very easy conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I initially, when these guys first approached me, I was kind of like, wait, what? And then, um, and then when I read the script, I sort of saw what they were doing and going like, oh yeah, this is, as soon as you read the script, you're like, oh, there is nothing else that like Al's biopic could be except this movie. Like, H wasn't too, too. Oh, it was like, so, it was very early. It was embarrassing. I would, yeah, I did not need, like, there was very little convincing that needed to happen. As soon as, like, I spoke to these guys and I read the script and saw what they were trying to do, it was just like, yeah, you can't sign me up fast enough and, and I'll start trying to learn the accordion. <laughs> and Evan, was the pitch simply, do you want to play Madonna? Yeah, I, I, I wasn't planning on doing anything for the rest of the year and I got an email and I opened it and the first thing it said was, you've been offered the role of Madonna and I just burst out laughing. <laughs> And then I saw it was a Weird Al biopic, and then I saw Daniel was in it, and I, it's, it's, what am I going to say, no? It's very easy, yes. I mean, one of my favorite things about the film, uh, it, one of my favorite scenes is that incredible backyard sequence, which is, you know, a bit boogie nights, but it's also, like, every celeb cameo, but also every underground comic, alternative comic cameo in, in, in that sequence. What was, how was that writing process, and like, did you, like, I just imagine you were just writing a list of every, everyone you could try and get. Yeah, I feel like there were 34 names in that scene at first, too. It was like every weirdo celebrity from, like, the late 70s, early 80s. We went through our dress books and just like, you, kick them on down. And, and thankfully, I wrote with nice on the Let Us Shoot It in Los Angeles, because originally it was going to be Atlanta. Yeah. And it would have been harder to, like, get all those people, oh, come on a plane for, you know. It would have been a fun minute flight. Yeah. <laughs> Just packing a plane full of friends. Right. <laughs> let's, let's give a big round of applause for uh, the Roku channel for making it. And you'll be able to see it on the Roku for Full free on the Roku channel. Uh, uh, Daniel. Uh, you seem to be an incredibly proficient accordion player in this movie. Yes. Is this movie madness? <laughs> um, uh, I am not. Uh, I, I got very, very lucky to have a friend called, uh, called Pete, Pete Salsici, um, who uh, is a self-taught accordion player who had a lot of time on his hands at the time and was willing to like give me some lessons. And then Al, also I have videos that I will treasure for the rest of my life, uh, that Al sent me some accordion lessons uh, and on, uh, just over email. And you know, I did what I could. It is a, it is a very hard instrument. He makes it look very easy. Um, and yeah, it's 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 incredible. You know, one of the fun things about the job is you get to like become like not proficient, but you get to like dip your toe into loads of you know strange little hobbies. And so that was it was fun to, to try it. And I got to be in the uh, trailer next to this yes. while we practiced. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was fun being. Uh, uh, 
it was fun just being on the email thread where you and Al were bouncing these videos back and forth to each other. I had nothing to add to it, but it was great to just sort it's of like watch. for dummies back and forth. Yeah. It was also like, I feel like I learned the, you know, it was like, it was probably roughly about a month between me learning the verse of my Bologna and the chorus. So like, my girlfriend was living in like a perpetual hellscape of just ba 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 So everyone was very patient in the making of this film. You know, you, you bring up the My Bologna scene. Uh, one of my favorite details of the scene is how it climaxes with everyone just beating the crap out of each other. <laughs> it's not something on the page or an inspiration in the moment. No, that was on the page. <laughs> That's pure Al. <laughs> we were just Al people like, crashing through windows and things like that, but on an 18 day schedule, that wasn't Al. Yeah, yeah. They shot this in 18 days. All those days. <laughs> It was pretty wild. <laughs> How did you achieve also this, like the, the concert sequences and the, like what type of rehearsals went into you know setting those? Sequences? Yeah, that was the. Uh, I mean, part of how we were able to achieve this in 18 days is we had stunt rehearsals, we had rehearsals with the band. Um, obviously, you know, Dan practiced the accordion, and, and uh, you know that that time that we spent in prep getting those things right meant that we could get there on the day and just like execute them, and you know. And I'm curious too, we just spoke about like then you also, sorry, can I also add Eric is the most prepared director in the world. That's also, that's also how it is. And I want to ask, um, we just talked about, uh, you, know, you know, getting into the uh, accordion mindset, but I'm, I'm curious to both Evan and Dan, what type of research did you do to get into your characters? Like in terms of like the, you know, the emulation of Madonna and Weird Al. I can, I'll probably be quicker. Um, I just can't stress less. Um, well, you know, I played a version of, yeah. of Al, I think it's fair to say. So other than, like, I mean, my, my main prep for this was, like, honestly, on, on such a tight schedule, was, like, learning all the choreography and the fight choreography and all that stuff, and sort of, you know, learning all the scenes, and, and just, I'm, I, I am, like, I, by the time I came to this project, I had been, like, a fan for a while, so I'm already sort of quite steeped in the song, so I've, like, got a head start on that, but, um, yeah, and, and then just, like, but hopefully being around and just trying to absorb what is what is relevant and then, you know, play also a version that does its own things that this man would never do. <laughs> How do you do it? Um, <laughs> never. Um, Evan, how about... I mean, well, I mean, I've loved Madonna since I was like, very little. There's like home movie footage of me and bunny ears and tutus and I was like four dads around a material girl and things like that. Yeah, so... <laughs> I've been training for some time, but um, I I did what well, the second I found out I was playing her, I just YouTube the you know stuff out of uh, her videos from the early '80s and interviews, and just like would sit there in my trailer, just like doing the voice and like trying to get like going like, over every single word. Like I knew it was a heightened version and a sociopathic version of it, <laughs> but I still wanted it to be good, so like, you know I worked on it. Yeah, we really want to like give them uh, but, but bring them to like not necessarily do impressions of, of Al and Madonna, really everyone in the movie, but to create bizarro versions of these people that exist within our universe, you know, where this movie exists. I hesitate to ask, Al seen the film, Al worked on the film, has Madonna seen the film? <laughs> I don't think so. Madonna walked out halfway through this. We have room for just a few questions from the audience uh, right there with the Al puppet. <laughs> no, come on, one question. It's too early for the two parter. Pardon. Do you want the puppets? I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think they can take the puppets now. Yeah. Uh, so, questions, questions. My question is, uh, Dan, you said you were well, already a fan. What is your favorite Weird Al? What is your favorite Weird Al song? I mean, I feel like for like as with most fans, it sort of like rotates and uh, changes. But like, like the one that I think my answer today has been um, Jurassic Park because it's also my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's a perfect, it's both the perfect parody of MacArthur Park and a perfect retelling of Jurassic Park. It's just, it's what, it's just perfect. Well done. <laughs> Will there be a director's cut? Uh, anything on the cutting room floor here? There, there's, there's some stuff. There's a few on the, little things. Yeah, yeah, there's a few little things. We would like to start a release the Yankovic cut campaign. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> start the hashtag. I'm going to look upstairs. Yeah, the right, right there. You forgot it. Guys, come on. Right over there. Oh, you got it? You got it? Let it go. How long, how, how long did it take the nail? But it was an impression, you said. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. Look at that. I, 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 hopefully on day one, maybe two. I mean, I feel like if we all had to hit the ground running, so if it wasn't good early, we would have What been. was the first scene? What was your, the first scene you were throwing? It's not like in the apartment, right? Yeah, the first yeah. scene was, the, was my belong. Yeah, my belong. which was a really nice, because it, it had both, like, a, an element of, like, getting one of the songs in and doing some accordion in front of Al. It was a very nerve-wracking first moment. Um, and then also just, like, a moment of pure madness, which represented the film very well and just like the insanity and that's the, how that scene ends. Uh, my, my, my wig actually came off at one point. Uh, yes, scene. it did. Okay. Maybe that'll be in the anchor yeah. time. <laughs> there, is, there is a moment where we, we, he threw me around the room so hard and my wig came off. That was good. Cool. Well, we wanted to like start from a base level too, like, like as chronologically as we could film this, you know, so it didn't have to go completely wild. Well, yeah, that was, right? was the very nice. Yeah. Shirtless and firing machine guns. And so, I mean, the thing that's also interesting is that, you know, it ends very dramatically, very climactically. Um, Al, I'm glad you've recovered. Uh, you know, it's, it's terrific. Um, will there be a sequel? I think there has to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we want to be the first final thing with this. The first bio thing for the sequel, I think we need to start hashtag release the Yankovic cut, hashtag uh, weird too. Still weirder. Weird too, weirder. Yeah. Alright, there's one more question. Make it a good one right there. When does the soundtrack come out? When does the soundtrack come out? Great question. We're talking about that. I can't guarantee it's going to happen, but we're talking to labels, and uh, yeah, we're looking for a soundtrack that'll include not on the songs but nearly all the scores, so it might be uh, like a double LP or a, a jam-packed CD, but that's in the works, we hope. You guys can watch this movie and dance many times as you want!